Thank you to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So I think over a year ago, I promised you guys in this video that I would make a Shimiji of the most voted Genshin character. And the most voted was actually Xiao. And I finally had time to make the Shimiji alongside with recording a good chunk of the process. So I wanted to show you guys that for today and possibly kind of explain and give some tidbits or tips about the Shimiji making process. So starting with the basics, Basically, in this folder, there is a .jar file, and the .jar file is what's going to load up your Shimiji. And basically, once you double-click it, it should load up an icon in your icon tray and drop a little guy from above. Inside your IMG or image folder will be all your frames. Right here has all my frames plus the PSD versions, but as I upload them, I tend to delete the PSDs so people don't have access to them. So right here, I'm showing you guys my Pomo Rain Puff one alongside with the icon, and I decided to do these in the pixel style as I find them a little bit clearer on a more smaller scale. So kind of taking a look at the different little things that your Shimiji can do. Basically, it's like a little desktop buddy that can throw your windows. It can duplicate itself. You can throw them around. They can sit on your little taskbar or windows. They can also climb the side of your, uh, I guess, your computer and stuff as well. So it's kind of fun to have a little companion. And I always find it fun to make these, even though it's a little long of a process. So right clicking the icon in the tray, you can set up basically your settings alongside with uh, restoring your windows. But the thing that I find important is that if you want to set new windows, you can click on settings, interactive windows, and you can add and delete any windows that you would like your Shimiji to interact with. So starting from the very beginning, I am taking a previously made Shimiji that I've made before, which is my Pomu one, and I'm duplicating the folder and renaming it to Pixel Xiao. If you rename the folder, it's important to go to the configuration, then go to settings and change your active Shimiji to the name of basically your folder. So in this case, I'm going to name it Pixel Xiao. This way it's able to read the files and load up our Shimiji properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click that and you can see I have this little Pomu and it's working correctly. So now we can actually start with the actual drawing of the frames. But before we get to that actually, other than the fact I'm gonna open up these first three frames, I am going to set up my references and just like my setup for my drawing space in general. So the little floating window that says there's nothing here, drop some images is a app called Pure Ref. And I believe it's free, but it's a great way to, if you want to have kind of like a floating transparent window for your references and stuff. I also find that it keeps the images nice and crisp or whatever initial HD or quality that they were in into that program. So it's kind of nice to have that as a floating reference so I can have it all over Paint to Asai just because version 1 does not have any floating windows. But I believe version 2 and Clip Studio Paint you can, so go ahead and use that if you don't want to use Pure Ref. So next up we have the icon. So I like to start off with the icon first just because I usually do the icon in pixel art anyways, and it's a much smaller canvas compared to the 128 that you will be using for your Shimiji itself. So I find pixel art a lot easier to make the icon. And it's like one of the things that you can test out really quickly to check if it looks correct, or you know, you can kind of plan how you want it to look like because you can just check your icon tray after you boot it up. But for me, I wanted to draw Xiao's mask for the icon. So usually the icon is something that represents the character. So for Pomu, I did her ribbon and a yellow heart. Um, in the previous Shimiji's that I did last year, I did Reimu, which I think I did a flower symbol, and then a, a nib for Ike, and I did a clover with an M inside of it for Maseki. Now with the icon for Xiao is finished, let's talk about today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. 
Spring is just around the corner, so experience Japan from the comfort of your own home with their beautifully packed snack boxes. This month, they are sakura themed for the hanami season. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box with 20 of the latest exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. This includes a full size drink and an exclusive ramen and many sakura flavored snacks this time around. During the hanami season, which is kind of like the flower viewing of the iconic cherry blossoms, sakura flavor snacks are very popular around this time of year. While Sakura Co. is an authentic Japanese snack subscription box, Sakura Co. supports local Japanese snack makers, and each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, but also includes Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. These snacks are also Sakura themed, with their Sakura Arare Tetra, their Sakura Dorayaki, and their Sakura Donut Bow. The tableware included in this month's box is this super cute kind of Neko Sakura dish, and like its name, it has little cute white cats and sakura flowers, and kind of with the blue dots, it's a little bit carrot coated, which I find very cute. Both boxes come with a 24 page cultural guide, and the booklet includes tidbits of information on each of the snacks in the box. It also talks about different locations, traditions revolving around the box's theme, also includes allergen information, ingredients, and if the snack is vegetarian friendly or not. Each month has a different theme, meaning that you get to try out a whole new selection of new treats and snacks every month. For example, Tokyo Treats box theme for the month of March is Sakura Snacktastic, while Sakura Co's theme is Beauty of Sakura. So to kind of start out, I wanted to try out the tea from the Sakura Co box. The tea is the sweet Sakura tea, and this one's like one of the prettiest teas that I've ever seen. They have these little blossoms that bloom when the tea is ready. Now I accidentally put all of them into my teacup, but in the booklet, it also shows the instructions and it says if you want more intense flavor or a larger batch of water or tea, then you can add more of those blossoms. So while the tea was brewing, I had a taste of a few of the snacks from the Tokyo Treat Box. I really loved the matcha latte Kit Kats, which kind of tasted a little bit creamier or milkier compared to the regular matcha flavor that I've had before. But my favorite has to be the Pie No Me Mini Pies or the Pear Tart. Not only are they super cute, but they have this nice sweet flavor from the white chocolate in the pear, which I really adore. As for the Sakura Co. box, I've tried the Sakura Arare Tetra, which were these really lovely, really cute little sakura and soy flavored crackers, which I really loved. But from the Sakura Co. box, my favorite has to be Sakura Shiroko Biscuit. In the middle of these have a delicious layer of an azuki paste, which I really liked, and it kind of has a slight tartness that is apparently from the ume juice, which is really nice touch from this kind of little biscuit. It was so freaking good that I was really tempted to kind of keep snacking on these the entire day, but I had to hold back. So if you would like to get a box for yourself or you want to give these as a lovely gift to family or friends, then do check out the link in the description and get your box today. Thank you again to Sakura Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to making that Shao Shimiji. So after I did the icon, I ended up switching the icon a little bit, but I did not show the process. We can start to actually do the drawing of our little Shimiji. So I highly recommend that you kind of play around with the styles that you would like, and I would appreciate it if people don't trace over my base, because I did a lot of experimenting to find what would work for me. You can use similar proportions and stuff, but please don't just like rip off my template. I'm tracing over mine just because I want consistency between all of the shimijis that I make in the future, so I am referencing my Pomu shimiji, and I will be referencing my Ike shimiji just because his I think clothing and it's just like his feet and stuff is a little bit more closer to the standard walking frames and everything else for a normal shimiji. Because for Pomoons at least, I had her floating and I did that for Reimu as well. So their walking frames were not like standard. They basically just bobbed up and down rather than having your legs kind of crisscross as a walking animation. 
So as we're kind of going through the kind of like pixel process, I kind of do a lot of like overlapping and kind of doing the outline for the face. But for most of the parts where it's like clothing and hair, I kind of chunk everything in section by section because it's easier for me to visualize. And I find it a little bit easier to do this and kind of get an accurate way of visualizing values and shape with the pixels because I'm not super proficient with doing pixel art but I find this method a little bit easier for me to understand. But if you're new to making anything related to shimmages, the easiest way that I can think of it is kind of like a frame by frame animation with a little bit of coding. So I will put a cheat sheet right at the very end. You're going to see it occasionally on my screen because I need to reference it every so often. Sometimes I write those into my notebook as well when I'm planning shimmages and planning what I want each frame to be. But for the most part, let's say the first three frames, so number one, two, and three is kind of, number one is like the neutral position, which is the one that I'm currently working on. And this is kind of my base for the entirety of Shao's Shimiji. So later on, I'm going to be doing his frame for two and three. And basically those ones will be his walking animation. So I'll have his legs crossing with the left over right. And then I will have another frame where his legs are kind of split. So if you put them in the sequence of one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three, it looks like he's walking. So I'll show it at the very end what this will look like so it's easier for you guys to visualize it. Oh, another thing. So because my pencil size kind of screwed up due to uh, having the licensed version and the pirated version from a long time ago, it no longer wants to export my files with transparency so I always have to import them into Clip Studio Paint which is why I work with a PSD file and I can export it and then I can boot up my .jar file to check out the animation for Xiao. So you can see I messed up one of the frames because I inverted the colors so let's go ahead and redo that and you can kind of see this is the walking cycle for Xiao. So Luckily, if you download the original template of the Shimiji, which is like a little white blobby guy, you can actually just redo all the frames, rename that one file name, and the coding and everything is already set. So you don't really have to worry about the coding unless you're a little bit more tech savvy. You can probably mess around with those and mess around with like the frequency and stuff. But I did not touch those because I'm not well versed in codes or anything like that so maybe in the future I will do that. So I'm only going to be showing a portion of frame number four because I'm not going to be showing everything but these are the next frames in my brain at least because I think they follow after number four. So we have 18, 19, 20, and 21. So 18 and 19 I don't show any progress or process of this and those ones are when he hits the floor after falling and then the next frame of 19 is when he gets up so that's right here and then the ones that I'm currently working on will be number 20 and 21 which is basically Xiao kind of like scooching his way across the floor of your desktop so it's kind of like a, a worm or a crawl whichever you want to do I find these frames a little bit on the easier side and a little bit less time consuming because I just really have to do the frame for 20 and then I can kind of budge the legs and the butt a little bit to make frame 21. But quickly moving along, we have the next frame, which is 22, and this is like a jumping frame. And I find this one quite fun to mess around with, especially for more unique characters. So in particular for Xiao, and I guess like for other characters, I always did more of a like a ninja jump. So I give them usually a headband or a little bit more cheeky kind of... I guess like cunning in a way, but for Xiao, I found it a little bit more suitable for him to just put on his mask and then kind of just do a leap. And I think the glowing effect kind of makes it look a little bit cool and kind of nice. So I wanted to do that. So for changing his body, I kept his head and his hair, his eyes and his eyebrows. I drew a mask over him and then I ended up making the entire body something new so it matches a little bit closer to what I wanted. After that, I'm going to do a quick test so that we can actually see. 
I like to test after each kind of like batch of frames. So I wanted to check the falling animation. I also want to show what it looks like when he does his jumping animation, the crawling animation. So this one's the crawling one and you can see that I got the order correctly. So he scooches kind of across the floor. And then next up we have our jumping one. So the jumping one is a little bit harder to see. So luckily we can pause him by right clicking and pressing pause animation. You can kind of see this is how he leaps. So the next frames that we are going to be doing is basically when you shake your character with your mouse, which is like what I consider like the swaying frames. So I'm gonna make a quick cheat sheet for myself so that I have something to reference. So this is not the one that I'm gonna include at the very end. I'll have a more concise, more, or I guess it's not concise. It's a more elaborate one so that we can kind of keep track of all our frames. So the frames that I usually get confused are the swaying back and forth, the spin order. Oh, I guess you can see my previous cheat sheet. So I made this one a long time ago, interpreting the original Shimiji. That is kind of like the base of what I think most people base their Shimiji's off of. But the one that I get confused the most is the spin order. So there is a section of images. So I think it's like 15 to 18 and it's 26 to 29 where it seems like things are out of order. So I found the order to be easier to understand if you kind of alternate starting with 26 and 15 and then you alternate so that you can do a spin animation, which I'll go over in later on in the video. So the reason why I needed a small little cheat sheet where you can see 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, I believe, have little kind of letters at the top, which is a dash, and then we have R, L, R, L, R. So this is going to keep my order kind of consistent. So as we move from 5, which I considered a neutral position, we have 6, which is Xiao kind of swaying to the right slightly. Then we have 7, which is him kind of swaying to the left. Then we have the right, left, then right right. It feels a little bit stupid to have to list it out, but trust me, I have messed this up where I've accidentally did two, I think, right frames rather than alternating, which made it a little bit frustrating to fix. So for me, I'm just going to take some time and nudge certain parts. So a lot of the time, I will have to redraw parts of the body, and this is mostly going to be seen when I'm doing the left frames because I need his arms to sway to the left, which covers majority of his body, and then the ones to the right is a little bit easier because there's a little bit less of overlap. I just have to separate some parts and then we can slowly shift some of the pixels in chunks to the right. And there are going to be some parts that I have to erase and redraw just for them to make more sense. But things like the hair, I tend to just kind of take a chunk, we shove it or like scooch it over a few pixels, lower my selection and then scooch them over. And I find it a lot easier to work with pixels because I can precisely move things and I think the details are a little bit easier for me to include when it's at such a small scale with pixel art. So I think if you would want to make a Shimiji from scratch, I definitely recommend maybe not doing pixel art unless you're like a little bit more used to doing pixel art, I think simpler shimijis to start off kind of gives you a better idea of how to do things right off the bat. So definitely experiment and don't go too large with your project at the very start because it might get frustrating. So now that I've basically exported my files, I've saved them as my PNGs, I opened up my .jar file and you can see him kind of swaying back and forth. And I think for the most part, this is how I like their swaying motion to be. Usually their head is a little bit more stationary because it's being grabbed by the mouse, but his body feels very wiggly. I also made frame number five very neutral because if you hold him in place, he kind of just looks back at you rather than wiggling immediately, which I find a little jarring. So the next kind of little batch of frames is actually the sitting frames. So I find the sitting frames kind of cute. So the kind of most common pose is for them to sit with their knees up and their hands on top of their knees. And I think this looks really cute at this very tiny size. So I decided to keep that for Xiao because he's just our small little lad, I guess. The next frame is just bumping that sitting frame up so that they can basically sit upon the ledge and then prepare for their legs to dangle. So the way how I guess the person who made the Shimiji coded it is that the 
bump of the, I guess the chibi up a little bit for the sitting will allow your feet to dangle, but it remains the canvas to be the same size. So I highly recommend that you make sure you find where that harsh line is where your chibi or your little shimiji shall sit on so that you don't have that weird overlap and there's going to be a few frames that require you to be very precise on where you put your pixels but for the most part a lot of them just touch the bottom of the ground but this one you do require him to kind of float in order to actually sit on top of your taskbar. Speaking of one of the frames that is very annoying to kind of align the grabbing of the corner and the climbing animations are one of the kind of frames that you need to be a little bit more precise about where you're placing pixels because it will look awkward if you don't have pixels filling in between the character and the gap. So right here I'm taking my old Pomu version and blocking out a gigantic blue square so I know where to chunk out Xiao's face but allowed his hands to kind of overlap so we know what our little hand is going to look like when he ends up grabbing the kind of corner or sometimes at this point it's going to be him kind of latching onto the side or the bottom of different windows or on your desktop itself. So I didn't really show these. So these are frames 12 to 14. Then we have frames 23, 25, which is basically the ceiling climbing, which I just basically rotated them and just scooched them over so that they fit a little bit more appropriately. So the next few frames, which I think are the last 17 frames that I need for the Shimiji are kind of the most time consuming, but luckily I kind of simplified them to be a little bit less daunting. So the frames that I have open right now are the sit and spin ones, which I needed my cheat sheet open. At this point, I had my notepad version open and hopefully you guys can use the guide or the cheat sheet that I provide at the end if you wish to reference it. But basically the order I believe is 26, 15, 27, 16, 28, 17, 29 as the end. And then it loops back if you put frame 11, I guess, for our little sit and spin. So oftentimes what I found is that some people do characters like usually facing forward and doing some kind of animation. But the ones that I've seen is like people facing forward and they're usually continuing to sit or some of them get up and do a spin. Some of them do um, like they get up and sing. There's like a bunch of different options that you can do. You can kind of see like the frames that I have in the top right hand corner where all my pomus are. So for her, I wanted her to do kind of like the kind of like chants with the light sticks, which I thought would be cute. And there's like little pomodachis coming out to kind of like support her, I guess. But for Xiao, I wanted to keep it simple because I find him a little bit more... I guess like low-key of a person so I feel like he wouldn't do anything too extravagant and I didn't want to do anything that regards like pain or anything for him so I felt something peaceful would fit more of his demeanor so I have him sitting forward um, even though oh I probably should explain this at first actually so Shimiji's face one side but whenever they face the other side it's just your image going to be flipped so you kind of need to make sure your image looks good from both sides and also if you care about the like asymmetry of your character pick the good side of your character because you're only going to be given one side to work with for like everything minus the kind of like frames that you can have a little bit more freedom with. So the one that I did for Xiao, like I mentioned, I wanted to go with something peaceful. So I have him sitting on the ground or on the window and I have him facing forward and he's just going to close his eyes, but he's going to kind of like open one eye to see that a little Xiao bird is going to land on him. Uh, so I did the sitting and dangling as well, but this is the sit and spin. So it happens very quickly. So just keep that in mind that the timing is very different for different animations. So this one happens very fast. And then we have these frames. So we're on the last 10 frames. So the first five is actually a duplication of your Shimiji, which is labeled as pull-up Shimiji. So a very popular version of this is basically a little ahoge or a tuft of hair on the ground appears and your character pulls that little tuft of hair 
out from the ground and it reveals another shimiji and they kind of like split in a funny way and it kind of flings themselves but the next one is what i consider like duplication i believe it's called split in two as the description I like to fuss around with this one the most just because I find the kind of timing of it a little bit... I guess it's slower but at the very end it has like one freeze frame so the last frame lasts the longest. So this one I wanted to have him kind of looks like, I don't know if he's like powering up but I wanted him to have his mask and kind of like one leg up, one leg down in a kind of like half kneeling position and then the kind of like powering up will just do something flashy and then another shimaji will appear so i did keep it a little bit more simple a very popular and i think the standard of this particular kind of duplication method or the split into two is actually the character grabbing their head or their hair and then pulling out a, their character again from their head so in this case if it was Xiao, he'd probably pull the side of his hair, pull out more hair, kind of like an amoeba where you pull one side and you're getting like a glob of it out. But I guess when you release that glob, you have two. So compared to the pull up Shimiji, this kind of sequence is a lot quicker, but it does kind of pause at the very end. So take that to your advantage or play around with the timing a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys again. So this is what it looks like. It's kind of like mask on, flames kind of appear, and then another Xiao appears kind of behind him. So I kept it very simple, but I think it kind of works out. So feel free to screenshot this. This is basically my little cheat sheet and I think it kind of gives everything a good order for you to follow. So hopefully it makes a lot of sense and if you do end up making some shimijis in the future, I would love to see them. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it's a lot of talking and rambling from me because there's a lot to go through. I don't consider this like a guide or a tutorial video. I'll link some in the description if you want something a little bit more concise and a little bit more detailed. But for the most part, hopefully you guys make a bunch of different shimijis of your characters or pre-existing characters and just have fun with it. Also, highly recommend do not leave your computer unattended and let your shimijis roam around if you don't have a very powerful computer. It might freeze your computer and you're going to have to force the shutdown. So if you plan to do that, make sure to save all your work. Otherwise, you might lose it to a bunch of little guys running around your screen. Um, but I think that's where I'm going to leave you guys with today's video. I am going to be making a few more shimijis in the future. I'm probably going to work on Nouvellet next and maybe Don Hung from Honkai Star Rail. But... For now, I'm going to take a break and I'll talk to you guys next week in the next video. Bye!